Why men ignore women at work from Modern Women Manual. Stay on the path of progress, let's get into it. I have a team of people. Everybody who works for me right now are men. I've noticed if I hire someone and they're female, I have to be careful about how I talk to them, even give, giving criticism. And maybe it's me, but I feel like I have to be a little bit nicer, a little mm -hmm. bit more gentler. Whereas with a dude, I can be like, can you just not do this again? And they're like, yeah, no problem, won't do it again. But if it's female, I'm like, okay, you did like this a little bit wrong. Here's how to do it a little bit better. Overall, you're doing a great job. Everything's fine, please don't be upset. It's interesting hearing the perspective from a woman boss that has to deal with female employees. She even admits like, oh yeah, women are, they're way more emotional and more difficult to deal with because of it. If a male CEO came out and said that exact same thing, he would be canceled. I was a man and I'm not a man, but if I was a man, I wouldn't hire a woman. I wouldn't do it. And I said all the time and I say that, and that is something that women need to consider when they're talking about this stuff. When you are saying that a man complimenting you and saying, oh, I really, I, oh, I really like your outfit today um, is a form of sexism. What is the, if you're a man, why hire a woman, right? So you no, fought all this time to be able to get into the workforce only to say these are going to be the rules. You know, if you say anything, even if you compliment me, if you, if you look at me, anything, I'm going to have a reason to fight you. And by the way, you're going to want to settle and pay me because even just the stain of an accusation is enough to ruin men. So what wow. is, what, if you're, if you're a guy, right, in this society, in this Me Too environment, in this, in this uh, litigation rich environment of misogyny and sexism and all of these claims, what is the value add? Uh, What's the, the risk, you know, the, the benefit and the risk? I just, I can't do the analysis. For a lot of the big companies, you don't hear this talked about enough. In today's world, it's meaning less and less if you're actually qualified for the job, and it more depends on what's in between your legs. What skin color are you? Who do you, who do you like to have in your bedroom? Did you know 60% of male managers say they are uncomfortable working alone with a woman out of fear of complaints of sexual harassment? Women in the workplace. Men, do not avoid working with women because you're afraid of sexual harassment complaints. That is gender discrimination. To avoid sexual harassment complaints, do not sexually harass people. Period. Those guys are smart. Let's just be real. I've heard tons of stories about male managers in the workplace. You know, say they have female subordinates. They don't like to be in rooms alone with their female employees. Because literally all it takes is one accusation. Not any actual crime committed or anything like that. An accusation. That can come from just any woman. And you can get heavily reprimanded for that, if not even fired or worse, being like publicly, you know, diminished because of it. But she's framing it as it's a catch-22. Okay, well, you can give the female employees more attention with the risk of them accusing you of something that you didn't do. And now, if you don't do that, it is gender discrimination. We in the clown world, bro. paper came out recently that looked at the impact of the Me Too movement on academia, and it actually shows that post-Me Too, women's productivity fell largely due to fewer collaborations with male researchers. The paper shows that this drop is most pronounced at universities where the perceived risk of harassment accusations is highest. So the actual findings comparing research before and after the movement are right here. And as you can see, after the Me Too movement, collaborations with male researchers inside the same institution fell to close to zero. The author points out that men feel like if they accidentally say the wrong thing, they could be canceled or fired. She also notes that institutions that have clear policies on harassment help reduce this perceived risk. And this isn't just in academia. The paper also cites a 2018 study which showed that 60% of male managers are uncomfortable participating in common activities with women due to the same concerns. And a curious finding of the study was that men make up for the loss in this collaboration by just collaborating more with other men, whereas women don't make up for it at all. The author concludes her findings by saying that Me Too was important for raising awareness, but it's also increasingly important for institutions to have a really clear set harassment guidelines. So big takeaway from this, there has to be repercussions for false accusations. There has to be. And the repercussions should be just as severe as whatever they are falsely accusing that person of. We need to hold them accountable. A lot of these women that put false claims on a man's name ruins his life potentially, and they face no repercussions because of it. It's insanity. I used to work with all men and people would always be like, oh, you must get hit on all the time if you work with all men. But what I had to explain was that actually in settings where it's like 70% men, 30% women, the women get hit on all the time. But in this case, I was literally the only woman on a 20 person team. And in those cases, the men just act like there are no women there and they ignore you. 
At least that's what I told myself. Can we talk for a moment about Me Too? You've rejected the idea that we should always believe the victim in a, in a, in a rape Well, that's a obvious. That's yes. what happened in uh, the Lynch cases in the 1950s in the United States. The uh, victim uh, was always uh, believed. Yes, and I was going to say that's fair enough. But why not accept the situation as being the victim deserves to be treated as if she's telling the truth in our attempts to get at the truth and in doing that, we do our best not to re-victimize her. Because that isn't how the adversarial system works, and I don't think but that we But why have not a... advocate for that? Because Rather the adversarial system is a very effective judicial system, and it's certainly the case that among crimes that are falsely reported, crimes are at the top of the list. So there is no believing the victim. There's no reason for people to assume that when they enter the criminal justice system that they're going to be treated with kid gloves or treated easily. Yeah. Since the Me Too movement, I would never recommend any man to be speaking to any one of his colleagues because it comes, at a, it comes at a huge risk. If she likes your advances, it's going to be all fun and games. If mm -hmm. she doesn't, she's going to be at Karen and HR in the morning and you're losing your job, but they're telling you about workplace misconduct and inappropriate mm. behaviour and stuff like that because it's been changed so far and... Men have to protect themselves and, and, you know, I think... But isn't that hypocrisy? Why is it that if a woman fancies you, yeah. your advances are okay? Yeah. But if she doesn't it, it, fancy it, you, it's because, then it's mm, deemed it's because, as something it, that is negative. It's because, they, it's, because, it's because... Does that mean that we've forgotten how to have discernment as yes, women? Yes, because, because, because what's happened now is, like what Pearl said is, like, someone is going to say to you that was wrong. Or truly, all it takes is that one false allegation and your life is ruined. So can you blame these guys for not wanting to interact with their female colleagues? And one of the biggest things I want to say in this video is, of course, Awful things happen to women. I am not saying that at all. Of course, there is real harassment that does take place, of course. But what I'm trying to drive home is the side effects of this, basically, where you have a good amount of women basically taking advantage of this whole Me Too era, where they are now weaponizing it against the men that they just don't like. Whether they did anything bad or not. They didn't get a raise at their job? Oh, actually, I don't know if you knew this, but this guy essayed me. Yeah, did you know that? I think, yeah, he should probably be fired. And I think I should have that job because I'm super, like, I'm the hardest worker. And then there's almost never any repercussions for falsely accusing a man. Meeting with a group of guys several years ago about never being alone with never, another woman. And this one guy said, hey, bro, in my job, and I know a lot of you guys are thinking the same thing. Hey, bro, in my job, I have to be alone with women. I'm like, no, bro, you don't. This guy, six months later, confessed to having an affair with this woman. The entire time he was telling us he had no this is something i would generally not recommend for the guys try your best not to get involved with your co-workers it will just almost always end in rubble all right i have a little bit of personal experience with something like this this is when i was younger when i was like 20 years old i was working at a place one of the girls there was cute started seeing each other but it ended up not really working out in not a really great way and then after that you still have to show up to work and see each other it's uh, it's really, really awkward. And I won't dive too deep into it, but it didn't end in the best way either. So seeing each other constantly, it was, uh, you know, it was a headache for sure. So really just be aware of that. If you are going to be getting involved with a female colleague, be prepared for the chance that you might have to quit the job or potentially be fired because of it. It's a, it's a big risk, but just know that when you're going into it. People, including myself, only became aware of the Me Too movement in 2017 when Rose McGowan, a white woman, wealthy woman who was a famous actress brought it up. But it was actually started all the way back in 2006 by Tarana Burke, an African-American social activist. Women of color have been speaking up about sexual abuse in low-income workspaces for ages but they never garner the same attention as a rich white actress. I go back and forth on this, honestly, of whether or not Me Too was actually a real thing or not, or if it was originally intended to basically be a weapon against men. Because in the beginning, it's like, okay, you're catching actual scumbags, like the Harvey Weinstein guy. But then now, what it is today, oh, it's Steve from accounting. He, sm he smiled at me a little bit weird, so I've now I've been essayed. Okay, you can be fired and publicly lambasted. You can lose your job. So I want to make that just super clear. What I'm actually talking about in this video is the false accusations, not the actual real situations because those are awful and they should not happen. There's this guy at my work, right? And when I first started, he was so nice. Literally was like, hey, like whatever. How's your day? He wasn't like exactly like that, but like whatever. He was just really nice, really friendly, cool, cool people. Okay. He told another coworker, oh my God, I like her. Like tell her and then let me know how she's feeling. She told me, I said, man's is not my type. I come into work the next day. 
I'm thinking everything's fine, everything's cool, everything's great. Literally, man's ignores my presence. I'm not even. I'm not even there. I'm air. I'm like a ghost. This man will not make eye contact with me. He will not acknowledge my presence. He was already going out on a limb, risking his job. So he comes back and he's like, nope. Just 100% focused in on work. You don't exist. You're invisible. As he should. This comment. When I worked at a national company, we, all the males, treated the females like they were air. Near zero interactions. That's what it's come to, bro. Never ever hit on coworkers. And a side note on this one. A lot of women really don't realize just how much of men's attention is attention. I would venture to say 80 to 90% of all the attention that men give women is sex. Cool. especially if she's like below 30 average attractiveness and a lot of women are completely oblivious to this so that's why you see when they get older you know they're hitting like 35 or 40 their looks have gone downhill and all of that 80 to 90 percent of male attention just completely evaporates like oh what what happened and they don't realize basically all of that attention was because of how they look i just prefer girls in literally every possible way of speaking and <laughs> Like, what does if that I even could mean? Go through life without interacting with men. That sounds like paradise. See, bro, this is like just pure misandry. That's all that it is, and it's so and it's so casual today. Because you know, for me personally, I would prefer women for some things, and I would prefer men to do some things. Even for me personally, I have my preferences on this stuff. If I'm dealing with any type of customer support, anything in the service industry, basically, any type of healthcare, I want there to be a woman. I want to be interacting with a sweet talking woman. And then I have my preferences for male roles as well. Are they building anything for me? Are they fixing anything? Etc. I just wasn't expecting guys to still be so immature in their 30s or be so scared of commitment. Mm -hmm. But when you're 34, when you're 35 and you're so like, yeah, I don't know what I want. I'm like, dude, you're like old. <laughs> Dude, you're like just hitting your stride and hitting your real value. <laughs> but why won't you settle down with a 35 year old woman like me? <laughs> We're not the same. That's it. Women are not meant to be working these 40 hour a week corporate desk jobs. We're not. I don't want to be here anymore. Man's flirt, depending on how he looks and presents, is another man's harassment. Yes, yes. And we are not doing a good job as women being able to explain why it's harassment versus being an attract an attractive opportunity men are frustrated men are not understanding what is the difference and why am i a threat if i'm being kind to you so because of your behavior women i am now going to pull back my finances and resources i'm now going to reduce my presence i'm going to reduce my intentions my efforts this this meme right here that's all i gotta say bro this meme right here I just walked by a construction site and nobody tried to holler at me. Did I lose it? Did I lose it? <laughs> just, no, nah, we're not gonna do it, bro. You're a woman that goes into the gym and you ask yourself, like, why does every man stare at me? Why don't I get approached by these men? Is something wrong with me? I'm gonna tell you the answer. I'm not being the Lulu, this is just facts. I know it and I've heard it from men saying why they don't approach me. The reason why you are not getting approached is because these men see you as a woman with high value. What? A lot of men just want to have fun. So they go and push themselves on a woman that they think don't have high value. This is the truth. Like, I'm trying to be kind, but that is the truth. If you are not getting approached in a place where everyone's breaking their necks to stare at you, they know that if they approach you, you will hurt their ego. Incorrect. This is why women cannot take dating advice from other women. It's because they lie to each other. This is how women compete with each other to get the highest value, dude. It's all the psychological warfare with women. So if she can put out, so if she can put out bad, false information that that ruins the chances of a thousand different women, why wouldn't she do that? There are tons of reasons why men don't approach today. Her being too high value, that is not one of them. There is a truly high value woman. That woman will get a lot of attention. So sick of this idea by that. We should always accept that in every situation, a woman is a victim. I'm not empowered by that. I don't find that to be empowering, right? The Me Too movement to me disempowered women because it said women never know what they're doing. They just are always little flowers and men take advantage. The truth is that women take advantage too. And the easiest thing for women to sell to get what they want is sex, right? This is what Tag the Sponsor proves. I want to be rich. I want to have money and I don't want to work. So I'm going to sell sex. I have no talent and I want to be an actress. 
So I'm going to sell sex. Sex is a power that women have. Being beautiful is a power. Being aesthetic, being feminine is a power that women have. And women tend to wield that power heavily throughout society. The other problem with dating is that one, I've been single for too long and I've lived alone for too long to where I'm too good on my own. I don't need a man. So I'm too forward. <laughs> I met a guy out in the real world and he asked for my number and he would text me like here and there to like meet him out at the bar. And I'm like, mm, nah, that's okay. I wanted him to ask me out on a date, okay? One night he asked me out to meet him and his friends out at the bar. I said, no, that's okay. And he said, dang, so I'm just never gonna get to hang out with you. Ask me on a date. Ask me on a date. We can go on a date. So I said that. I said, if you ask me on a date, we could hang out. <laughs> he didn't like that. He didn't like that very much. He just said, damn, okay. I guess that means I can't hang out with you. Literally, I'm giving you the most simple thing to do. Ask me out. And he responded, you know how he responded? I mean, we can just hang out with just us. I just didn't know like what the ideal situation was for you. What does that mean? Literally, what does that mean? If you just wanna, you know, let me know so that I can boot you and tell you that I'm not interested. But men just like aren't men, men aren't the same anymore and I don't feel like dealing with it because I don't need to. He did ask you out. You literally said he invited you out to a bar with his friends. He's he's inviting you to hang out. What? A feminine woman would just do anything to be in your presence. If she's having to do this whole frame control thing where she's like, no, it has to be a date. You have to ask me on a date. You have to say date. It's her trying to pull you into her frame. If she actually really liked this guy, she was a feminine woman, she'd be like, yeah, of course. Yeah, I'll show up. That sounds fun. Great. She's standing in her own way of her success. I just want to know if other people feel the same way that I, I just had a date. It went great. But some sometimes after a date, I just feel incredibly sad, even if everything went well. And I don't know why. And I'm acting like a crazy person. And I couldn't control. Probably missing an old. I just feel this like feeling of sadness, Alpha Widow. emptiness, and like abandonment. I don't know. And. And literally the date was fine. Everything was fine. And I don't know why I'm feeling this way. Like, do you, do you feel this way? And like, every part of me just wanna like, block him, self-sabotage and just never talk to him again so that like, I just disappear. So I won't screw it up. Like, I just wanna end it and everything now when everything was just going so smoothly like i don't know why um maybe i'm just too broken to have like a normal relationship like my it gets so exhausting to overthink everything because you pick up on every little details and vibes and it's just exhausting to be dating even even if and it's not about other people it's about me even if the most perfect guy shows up in my life i don't think i can right now so yeah F that, that video was actually quite real this is what excessive dating does to women like there is only so many times that you can fall in love there really is. And, and for men, that number is probably higher. But this is how the current dating market affects women. They're in it so long, they've been with so many different dudes, is that they just cannot emotionally attach anymore. They just can't. I don't know if that's a situation with this girl, but it's a situation with a lot of them, where their hyper hypergamous nature has been just completely let loose. They have that hyper abundance. They can go on 50 dates in a day if they wanted to. Always thinking the grass is greener, exchanging one dude for the other. It's like a piece of tape. Every time you peel it off and attach it to the next thing, it's not gonna be able to stick as well. And if you do that over and over and over and over, it's not gonna be able to stick at all. It won't plant, it won't plant, it won't emotionally connect at all. That's it for today's video. Be sure to like, subscribe, stay on the path of progress. I'll see you later.